Welcome to Voice Bootcamp, a global name in unified communication. Hello, my name is Faisal Khan, CEO and founder of VoiceBootcamp.com. In this series of do-it-yourself study kit for Cisco Unified Voice Customer Voice Portal or aka CVP deployment, I'm going to discuss the non-native component. Now, in the previous uh, chapter, we focus on the native components of your CVP solution. Well, non-native components that are not really part of CVP, but they are in some cases required by CVP in order to uh, a, a part of the CVP solution in order to complete your uh, complete uh, solution that you need. So they are as important as a CVP component themselves. Now, the non-native solutions could, incre uh, could include, but not all, for example, ingress and egress gateway, VXML uh, gateway, uh, presence, uh, SIP proxy server, contact center enterprise, uh, CVP, ASR TTS, and many other applications, such as a content service switch, a call manager, and unified border element. Now, the ingress or the egress gateway happens to be a gateway that connects your organization to uh, an external network for sending calls or receiving calls. However, ingress egress gateway does not even have to be uh, that's something that is connected to outside world it could be something within your own network but what it is is it receiving calls that comes into cvp uh, that will be considered as an ingress gateway and sending uh, when cvp is sending calls to a gateway for further uh, for external call then it becomes an egress gateway so typically the egress gateway will be used to send calls to pstn whereas Ingress Gateway will be receiving calls from PSTN into CVP solution. Now, you could have the same router as Ingress and Egress Gateway, or you could dedicate one for Ingress and one for Egress Gateway. Now, you could use a choice of protocol, for example, SIP, to route a call from the Ingress Gateway to SIP, uh, sorry, CVP server. Now the VXML server, which is uh, sorry, VXML gateway, well, not necessarily server. That's a title error. The VXML gateway happens to be uh, a Cisco router with a VXML capability. So it's acting as what we can call a voice browser. Now think about um, you want to go to Google web page. So you're trying to talk to a web server that is residing on the Google data center. So what you do is that you open up your web browser, which is Internet Explorer, Firefox, or Chrome, and you type an address. That address is then sent to the Google using a protocol that we all know is HTTP. Google will then process, so, so obviously the Google will then send some programming code, uh, which your web browser will then, of course, uh, execute and interpret the language and show you the visible uh, result of it on your web page. Well, think about that Internet Explorer or Firefox is your Cisco router when it comes to VXML voice browser. The VX the router will send an HTTP request to the VXML server and the VXML server will then respond to that by sending the necessary messages. And uh, whatever the result is that the router will then intercept that result and process it back to the caller. A VXML document can be in a form or from a VXML server or an IVR service on the call server. Now, when you invoke a VXML uh, document, speech recognition, uh, the uh, servers can be used for these purposes. Now, you can store the media files locally on the VXML uh, on the iOS gateway, or you can store them on any external media server that runs IIS or Apache web server. Now, the presence, which could uh, be used to provide um, weighted load balancing and redundancy. It is used for centralized dial plan configuration. Um, it is a SIP proxy feature that is uh, communicating with call manager. You could use the presence to uh, as a simply SIP routing. So, for example, from one call server, you can send the traffic to pres SIP uh, presence. Presence will send the traffic to another call server. Uh, you can have ingress gateway send calls to SIP uh, presence, presence send the calls to egress, and so and so. So aside from presence uh, acting as you know instant chatting, 
it is also a safe proxy server for routing calls between the between the two endpoints. Now, Cisco SIP proxy server, which is um, as of now, uh, it is a virtual machine which you install on a VMware. Uh, can, it's also available in an iOS-based router using an SRE module. Now, SIP proxy server can provide much more resil resilience uh, connectivity, provides a good failover and redundancy as well. Now, now using a SIP proxy, you can provide a, a load balancing between multiple call servers or multiple call managers or whatnot. Now again, you don't have to have a presence uh, SIP proxy, but it is something that you, you may face in your large scale deployment. <coughs> now the ICM or UCCE often known as is an enterprise contact center that is required only if you're going to do advanced call control and queuing the call. Now CVP can send and receive SIP headers from the ICM script. Call server will connect to ICM uh, server using the ICM VRU or often known as the PG. Now the ICM uh, VRU or PG gateway will translate the call server, uh, translate the uh, information between the call server and the ICM server itself. Now you would use this ICM script editor to, do, to develop your own uh, script that controls the call flow but that particular script will then send or control messages into the CVP script by using network VRU script so ICM script will instruct the CVP what to what your script to execute and what information that it needs to receive or send so ICM is control of that particular script that are often known as micro application. Now media server, as I said, is basically a simple web server running either Apache software or Microsoft IIS. VXML gateway, which happens to be a Cisco IOS router, will then uh, communicate with the media server to pull uh, all the media file that is required by the script. For example, if the script says I need to play a welcome message, welcome.web file, it, uh, media, uh, iOS gateway will contact the media server because CVP will tell the iOS gateway which server to communicate with. Download the music file and once it's downloaded, uh, it will keep a cache if it is configured and that cache will then be used for further uh, required for that particular file. So that subsequent file, uh, the gateway does not have to make a call to the media server. Now when a file is retrieved from the media server, it can be cached locally on IOX VXML gateway. You can have a multiple media server for redundancy and load balancing. And a CSS 11,000 content service. Uh, for example, you can use the 11,500 11, uh, series or ACE 4700 series to do load balancing across multiple media server you might have. ASR and TTS. These are specialized server that can uh, do advanced speech recognition and text to speech recognition. The content switch or uh, is SCE 4700. These are special uh, Cisco hardware based switches that can provide load balancing between a uh, you know, kind of like a server farm concept. So they can be used for not just necessarily VXML server or media server, but you can use them for any other services like uh, such as a database or web server or some you know custom made servers that you are running. Now it does provide failover because if one server fails in the server form, the other server can continue to provide services. It does provide uh, it does provide what we call is intelligent load balancing, and you can use VRRP between the two CSC uh, content service switch devices with one virtual address, so that in case if one goes down, the other one can pick it up. Call manager, uh, Cisco Unified CM, which happens to be uh, a call manager, your PBX. Uh, it set up and tear down calls to IP phone. It is required by Cisco Unified CVP 
for contact center enterprise calls. Uh, technically, you would use call manager uh, for your agent. This is where all your agents are registered. And of course, sometimes to send a call to CVP or, or send a call directly to ICM, which will then send a call to CVP. So call manager plays a vital role because that's where all your agents are connected. That's probably where the call will be coming in from or where the call will finally uh, destined for. So that is your uh, PVX, IP-based PVX. Now you can also use a third-party PVX if you want to. The cube Cisco Unified Border Element, which is basically a, a, a router with a special iOS that provides connectivity between the two IP network. It acts as a demarcation point, secure enterprise edge, run as a feature as a part of iOS router so you don't ha really have to install anything. And it requires flow through mode of media if you are communicating with CVP server. Now, as we showed you earlier that the CVP its server itself has a multiple subsystems that are running. You have call server that runs SIP service, ICM service, and IVR server. Uh, these are all part of your call server. Then of course, the same physical box could have a VXML server. Whenever CVP needs to communicate with ICM, it will use the ICM service to communicate with ICM, whether it's a new request or an existing request. If the CVP needs to communicate with a SIP proxy server or a call manager for that matter, it will use a SIP ser service, which is a SIP protocol, to communicate with those two endpoints. If it requires to use the VXML gateway functionality using HTTP, then it's going to use the IVR service, uh, IVR system uh, system service, and if it requires, if the gate, iOS gateway needs to contact VXML server, then it will communicate with the VXML service within that particular uh, server. So these are the functional overview. Um, the VXML gateway can do communicate with ingress gateway using RTP protocol. So that um, let's assume. Uh, let's say let's say the customer calls in and CVP is sorry UCCE decided that the customer is going to hear the message call welcome to voice bootcamp. Well, that welcome dot web file is located right here in the media server, which will be downloaded on this router and then from this router the call will go to the voice gateway using the RTP channel so that the user hear the welcome prompt or the messages. So non-native component may, may not be used in every solution, but they are vital to your, uh, your solutions. Some of them are, some of them you will use, some of them you will not uh, uh, be required to use. All right, so that's pretty much it for the non-component, non-native component. I will see you in the next uh, chapter.